السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأنزلنا إليك الذكر لتبين للناس ما نزل إليهم ولعلهم يتفكرون صلوا على محمد وآل محمد There is no question amongst all Muslims that the Quran is the holy book. It is the book that all Muslims refer to. It is the book that all Muslims learn from. And we base our religion and our values based on the Quran. And there's no division regarding the Quran. Everyone accepts the Quran. However, where the Muslims are divided is not on the actual Quran, but rather on the interpretation of the Quran, on the understanding of the Quran, on the tafsir of the Quran. The verses and the surahs of the Quran are the same for all Muslims. However, when it comes to the interpretation, you see a huge difference. You see different mindsets, different ideologies. You have the Salafi using verses of the Quran to argue their beliefs. You have the Shi'i uses, using verses of the Quran to argue their beliefs. And sometimes you have these different thoughts and ideologies being used and using the Qur'an to strengthen the argument that some ideologies have. And this is why the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, they say that you cannot always refer to the Qur'an when it comes to debate. Taking it off of face value without understanding, truly understanding the tafsir and the meaning of the Qur'an. Why? Because the hadith says, Al-Qur'an hammalun du wujuh. Meaning that you could take a different meaning and you apply it to the Qur'an. And someone else takes a very opposite meaning and they apply it to the same verse of the Qur'an. This is why it is very important to have the proper tafsir of the Qur'an, the proper interpretation, the proper exegesis of the Qur'an. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Qur'an in a way where there are some verses that are clear. No one could come and argue with those verses. These are the muhkam, the mother of the book. These are the foundations of the book. These are very clear. And then there are other verses that are referred to in the Qur'an as mutashabihat, meaning ambiguous verses in the Qur'an. And these ambiguous verses, they require interpretation. They require understanding, but not any interpretation. They require interpretation from individuals who know the Qur'an, from individuals who understand the Qur'an. And that is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and his holy household. They are the true interpreters of the Qur'an. Allah says in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Imran, هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتٌ Allah says, He is the one, God, is the one who brought down upon you the kitab. هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ From it are verses that are very clear. No one could come and change and twist the meaning of these verses. Ayatul Muhkamat. Hunna Ummul Kitab. They are the mother of the book, meaning they are the foundations of the book. 
وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتِ And there are others that are mutashabih. There are others that are ambiguous, that are not very clear. And then Allah says in the Qur'an, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ ابْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَابْتِغَاءَ تَقْوِيلَةِ And there are individuals who there's a disease in their hearts. The munafiqeen, the hypocrites, those who try to make the religion go with their needs. Instead of adapting their life to the religion, to what God wants, they want religion and God to adapt to the way they live their life. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْ They go after the verses that are mutashabah, after the verses that are not very clear. What do they do? اِبْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَابْتِغَاءَ تَقْوِيلَةِ They try to cause fitna, tumult in the community, and they try to change the meaning of the Qur'an. Religion is a very powerful tool. And religion, a lot of people take advantage of religion. You find people, they say things in the name of religion to fool people. So it's very easy to come and take verses in the Qur'an and to make them fit with your desires, with your needs. And then you come and you tell them, this is what God is saying in the Qur'an. So Allah acknowledges this. الْفِتْنَ وَابْتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلِهِ And then Allah says in the Qur'an, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ But the ta'wil, the interpretation, the real exegesis of the Qur'an, it is not known except by God. And who else? وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ Those who God has given them knowledge. Who are those who Allah has given them knowledge? A specific group of people. This is why, this is one of the arguments that the Shi'as, the followers of the Ahlul Bayt, used to argue for the sake of imama. Because the other school, they say any person could be an imam. Any person, yalla, you, you got up, you come, you lead the prayer, and you become the khalifa, you become the leader, and you're the imam. But we say no. The imam needs to be able to interpret the Qur'an. The imam needs to be given knowledge by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-rasikhuna fil ilm. The ones who God has given them knowledge. Now, before we go and talking about who are those people, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make some verses in the Qur'an clear and other verses not so clear? Isn't Allah, isn't Allah supposed to guide us all? Why would some verses become ambiguous while other verses are very clear and straightforward? Here, scholars, they give different reasons and different interpretations. One of them, which we spoke about not last night, but the day before, and that is the i'jaz, the inimitability of the Qur'an. One of the features of the Qur'an that make the Qur'an a miracle and brought so many people to accept Rasulullah is because the Qur'an is inimitable, meaning you can't imitate the Qur'an. It's a mu'jiza. And one of the ways it is inimitable is through the language of the Qur'an. So the language of the Qur'an is in a way where no one could come and make something up like it. Where no one could come and copy it. And in order for it to be that way, then some verses come off as ambiguous. They come off as mutashabah. This is what. Second, they say that the Qur'an is not only speaking directly to one time and one person and one group of people. The Qur'an was revealed 1400 years ago, but it is speaking to me right now in 2022, just as it was speaking to people 1400 years ago. The Qur'an is not like a newspaper, not like a, any book that you get up. When you get up and you read a book, you could read it, even if you don't see the date and the time, you could contextualize. You could come and say, I, I, I gather, I could, I, could, I could, you know, I could conclude that this was written a hundred years ago. I could conclude that this was written 500 years ago. We could conclude that. The Qur'an, when you read it now, or you read it 1400 years ago, it's as if it's the same. So this is why sometimes some verses come off as ambiguous. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking in general terms for all people, for all humanity, for everyone. It's not speaking directly to me as an individual based on my own circumstances. This is 
the second reason. The third reason why there are some ambiguous verses in the Quran is that we don't have the knowledge of the revelation. Verses of the Quran were revealed over 23 years. The Quran began being revealed in the Ghar of Hira, in the cave of Hira, when the Prophet was 40 years old. And every day and every month and every week, verses would be revealed until the Prophet passed away. 23 years. So every time a verse was revealed, it was revealed based on a context, based on a story, based on an incident. We don't know the stories. We don't know the incidents. So this is why some verses for us, they come off as ambiguous because we don't know the context of revelation. If you know the context, then it's not going to be ambiguous. This is the third point and the fourth point, and perhaps the most important is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made certain verses in the Quran ambiguous so that people go back to the Ahlul Bayt. So that people go back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The Quran is not meant to be understood on its own. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the Quran and gave us interpreters of the Quran. These interpreters of the Quran, they and the Quran, they go hand in hand with one another. They do not separate from one another. And these are not our words. These are the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. When he talks in the hadith of Thaqalain, in the hadith of the Thaqalain, he says, Inni tarikun fikum al-Thaqalain. Kitab Allah وَعِتْرَتِي أَهْلَ بَيْتِي I am leaving behind the two weighty things, the book of God and my Ahlul Bayt, and they shall never separate from one another until they meet me at the Hawd, at the pond of Kothar in paradise. What does this mean? When Rasulullah says they shall never separate from one another. Now this hadith is accepted in Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim, he says, the book and the Atra, the family of the prophets. Now there's another one of the one of the other books. They come and he says, Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. Even though that hadith is lower in rank, even according to the Sunni scholars, lower in rank than Sahih Muslim, but you find some people they refer to that hadith and ignoring the one that says Kitab Allah wa Atrati. Even though it's higher in rank according to their standards. In our standards. It's very clear. Kitab Allah wa itrati ahla bayti. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have an interpreter to the Quran. That's like going and saying, I read the textbook for the medical school. I went, I went to the medical school textbooks, I read them, and now I'm a doctor. Does that make sense? No. You need someone to explain it for you. You need someone to teach you. You need someone to show you to clarify things for you. Can you come and just say, I'm a doctor because I read this textbook? No, you can't. Same with the Quran. The Quran, Allah sent us the Quran, but Allah also sent us guides, individuals who will explain the Quran. And who was the first professor of the Quran? Who was the first person who was tasked with interpreting the Quran? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi the first was Rasulullah. Rasulullah, he had two tasks. He had one job, which is deliver the Qur'an to the people. The Qur'an is being revealed onto his heart, and then he would deliver it to the people. But he also has another task of explaining and interpreting the verses in the Qur'an. And this is by the command of Allah. Allah says in the Qur'an, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرُ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ we sent down the dhikr of the Qur'an upon you so that you clarify, so that you teach people, so that you show people the way. And Allah also says, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever the Prophet, the Messenger orders you to do, then you have to do it. So this is why the words of Rasulullah are hujjah upon us. The words of the ma'soom, of the infallible, of the prophet are proof upon us. Today I find some people, Muslims, they come and they, you tell them this is halal and this is haram. They say, no, 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 this is not mentioned in the Quran. Okay, it's not mentioned in the Quran. What does that mean? They say, no, only bring me verses in the Quran. 
This is a wrong attitude. When you became a Muslim, what did you say? You said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. So now, why are you rejecting what Muhammad said? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa alayhi wa So, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to take the Qur'an and also take the interpreters of the Qur'an. After Rasulullah comes the position of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى You have to follow the Qurba. You have to follow the family of the Prophet. Why? Just because? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not after nepotism. The Prophet was not after nepotism. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah want us to follow specific group of people because they are the true interpreters of the Qur'an. And after Rasulullah, the interpreter of the Qur'an was Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And this is a hadith narrated by an nasai in his Khasa'is, narrating a hadith from Abi Sa'id al-Khidri. So this is a Sunni tradition by an nasai one of the Sahah, one of the six books that they consider the correct books. He says, كُنَّا جُلُوسًا نَنْتَظَرْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وآله. He says, we were sitting, waiting for the Prophet to come out of the masjid. فَخَرَجَ إِلَيْنَا وَقَدْ انْقَطَعَ شِسْعُ نَعْلِهِ So the Prophet, he came out, and the sandal strap of his sandals, they had broken loose. وَقَدْ انْقَطَعَ شِسْعُ نَعْلِهِ So he says, فَرَمَى بِهِ إِلَىٰ عَلِيًّا عليه السلام. So Rasulullah, he handed over, he, he tossed his sandals to Imam Ali so that Imam Ali could fix the sandal of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And this is the relationship between Imam Ali and Rasulullah. Just like a father's son. He tells him, do this for me. And there's no shame in helping and being there for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And then Imam Ali is sitting and he's fixing the sandals of the Prophet. Then Rasulullah, he says a statement. He says, إِنَّ مِنْكُمْ رَجُلًا يُقَاتِلُ النَّاسُ يُقَاتِلُ النَّاسُ عَلَىٰ تَأْوِيلِ الْقُرْآنِ كَمَا قَاتَلْتُ عَلَىٰ تَنْزِيلِهِ He says, there's from amongst you a person that will have to fight people over the interpretation of the Qur'an just as I was fought and I had to fight people over the revelation of the Qur'an. So I had, Rasulullah saying, I had to fight people. My struggle was the revelation. One of you, the struggle is the interpretation of the Qur'an. Here, so Qala Abu Bakr, and this is An-Nasai is mentioning this. Abu Bakr, he says, Ana ya Rasulullah? Is it me, O Rasulullah? Am I going to be the one who interprets the Qur'an? Qala la. Qala Umar, Ana? Umar says, is it me, ya Rasulullah? Qala la. Walakin khasifun na'al. It is the one who is fixing the sandals. Referring to Imam Ali alayhi salam. And this is a position that Rasulullah made clear in front of all the Muslims that it, was go it is going to be Imam Ali who interprets the Qur'an and people are going to fight him. People are going to wage war against him because of his interpretation of the Qur'an. And this is exactly what happened. Imam Ali alayhi salam, as soon as power came to him, three wars were waged against him. Three wars. He ruled for five years. He was left in the house for over 20 years. But as soon as, as soon as the official power and authority came to him, three wars were waged against him. Why? Because of the tafsir of the Qur'an. They all, they all go back to the interpretation of the Qur'an. They all go back to the interpretation of the laws of the religion of Islam. Now, after Imam Ali, this power, this authority of interpreting the Qur'an, it goes to the rightful Imam after Imam Ali alayhi salam. There are Imams. Imam al Hassan, and then Imam al Hussein, and then Imam Zayn al Abdin, and then Imam al Baqir, and then Imam al Sadiq. Now, the Imams, they had brothers. For example, Imam al Kadhim, he had a brother, Abdullah al Aftah. When Imam al Sadiq passed away, Abdullah al Aftah, he said, I am the Imam. Even within the family, it happened. But then, how would people distinguish who was the rightful Imam and who was the wrong Imam? By their knowledge.
By their knowledge. This is clear. Today, if you want to know who is the Imam after the Prophet, see who was the most knowledgeable person after the Prophet. After the Prophet, who was the most knowledgeable person? Only Imam Ali alayhi salam. This is why he was the only one who says, Ana, he was the only one who says, Saluni qabla an tafqiduni. Ask me before you lose me. He was the one who Rasulullah says about him, Ana madinatul ilm wa aliyun babuha. I am the city of knowledge and Ali is the gate to that city. And then after it goes on to the Imam, after Imam who is appointed by Allah. One day, Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, he sees one of the Muslims of that time, a man by the name of Qatada. Qatada. If any of you are familiar with the books of Sunni tafsir, you see the name Qatada is mentioned in every other hadith. Qala Qatada, Qala Qatada. Qatada said this and Qatada said that. Imam al-Baqir, he saw Qatada. He tells him, Qala lahu al-Imam al-Baqir, Ya Qatada, O Qatada, Balagani annaka tufassir kitabullah. I heard that you are doing tafsir. You are giving your own opinion of the Quran. So he says, Qala bala. He says, yes, I am giving my tafsir of the Quran. And then the Imam tells him, Qala in kunta fassartahu min nafsik, faqad halakta wa ahlakt. If you are giving your own opinion, then you are going to mislead other people and mislead yourself. If you're giving your own opinion. وَإِن كُنْتَ فَسَّرْتَهُ مِنْ قِبَلِ الرِّجَالِ فَقَدْ هَلَكْتَ وَأَهْلَكْتَ And if you are taking the other men, other people, then you are misguided and you are misguiding other people. إِنَّمَا يَعْرِفُ الْقُرْآنَ مَنْ خُوطِبَ بِهِ Then the Imam says, the one who truly knows the Qur'an is the one who the Qur'an was speaking to them. Who was that? Rasulullah and the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا عِنْدَ الْخَاصَّةِ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ نَبِيَّنَا Muhammad. And this is only with the exclusive small group of people from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi وَمَا وَرَّتَكَ مِنْ كِتَابِهِ حَرْفَ And then the Imam tells him, and you do not have the knowledge of one letter in the Qur'an. How can you come and give tafsir of the Qur'an? This is why my dear brothers and sisters, we said earlier, the intro, we're all, all Muslims are united over the Qur'an, but the division is over the tafsir of the Qur'an, the interpretation of the Qur'an. And we're not allowed to give our own tafsir. Rasulullah says, مَنْ فَسَّرَ الْقُرْآنَ بِرَأْيِهِ فَلْيَتَبَوَّأْ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ The one who gives their own tafsir of the Qur'an, their own interpretation, yeah, I think this verse is saying this. I think this verse is saying this. Who told you to think? Who told you to come and think like, like this? The, the verse is the message of God, what God is trying to tell you. You have to find out what God is trying to tell you, not what you want it to say. So here, we have no right to do our own tafsir of the Quran. We have to get the tafsir from the rightful sources. So now, my dear brothers and sisters, Today you see there's different mentalities. There's different groups of people. One Muslim, one group of Muslims, they say, no, we follow exactly the tafsir that was given to us from Rasulullah and then from Imam Ali and then from the Imams. And then there's another group of people that say, no, we don't need tafsir. I could understand the Quran on my own. And this started, this movement started during the life of the Prophet. The Prophet had not passed away yet. And they began to interpret the Qur'an on their own. When the Prophet was on his deathbed. The Prophet was on his deathbed. He tells the Muslims, bring me a pen and a paper so that I tell you something that you shall never go astray. One of them, he says, Yakfina kitabullah. The book of God is sufficient for us. We don't need interpretation. The book of God is sufficient for us. The man is hallucinating. The man is dying, he's hallucinating, his mind is not there. The book of God is enough for us. That attitude is alive until today. The attitude of rejecting and sidelining the proper mufassireen of the Qur'an and saying we understand the Qur'an on its own. But now the question is, is the Qur'an sufficient to understand on its own? Understand Islam on its own, is the Qur'an sufficient? The answer is no. Today. Some non-Muslims, they come and they say, I read the Qur'an. 
If I want to teach a non-Muslim about Islam, I don't only give them the Qur'an. I give them the Qur'an, and I give them a book that explains the Qur'an. A book that explains the religion of Islam. Because someone could read the Qur'an, وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ Verses of jihad, verses of fighting, verses of this and that. And people could take the verses out of context and mislead themselves and mislead other people. But this mentality, this ideology that said the Qur'an is enough for us and we don't need anything else, they thought that they were preserving the Qur'an, they ended up losing the interpreters of the Qur'an who are the Ahlul Bayt, and they ended up losing the Qur'an itself. Because if you don't have the real interpretation of the Qur'an, you might have the letters of the Qur'an, you might have the words of the Qur'an, but the soul of the Qur'an is not there. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he says, رُبَّتَا لِلْقُرْآنِ وَالْقُرْآنُ يَلْعَنُهُ Perhaps there's someone who's reciting the Qur'an. Maybe you go and you see this person is reciting in a very beautiful voice. You say, MashaAllah. But the Qur'an is cursing this person day and night. Why? Because they misinterpreted the Qur'an. They changed the meaning of the Qur'an. And this is where you see the problem and the division rises amongst the Muslims. This is why this is such a major topic. This is such a major issue. It goes back to the interpretation of the Qur'an because if you have the true and proper interpretation of the Qur'an, then you will have the Qur'an and the meaning of the Qur'an. Today, a group of Muslims, they come and they say, God has a body, Allah has a body. Allah has a face, God has legs, God has hands. And this is mentioned in Bukhari and these other books. Now, is this something that we can accept? No. Because Allah says, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ Nothing resembles Allah. But they come and they take these verses. For example, يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ The hand of God is above their hand. They come and they say, God has a literal hand, just like my hand and your hand. Here, the Imams of the Ahl-Bayt, they say, no. Yadullah doesn't mean God has a physical hand. It means God's power is above their power. God's authority is above their authority. Or the other verse, وَجُوهٌ يَوْمَ إِذٍ نَاظِرَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نَاظِرَ The day people will look towards the face of God. Bukhari, he mentions this hadith, he says, Rasulullah told people, you look at the full moon, you see the full moon? On the day of judgment, you will see the face of God, just like you see this full moon. And this is something that has become a part of the belief system of the non-Shi'as. But we say no. How can you limit, how can you give God a face? That's just like saying, Jesus is God. You're, giving, you're limiting God. You're giving, giving God a body, an image, a size. He'll be taking a place, a, a time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have a face, like my face and your face. So what does wujuhun yawma idhin nadhara ila rabbiha nadhara mean? The imams of the Ahmed, they say, people will look towards the mercy of God. They look towards the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another issue. Today, all of this fight and Wahhabis attacking Shia, just three days ago in Mashhad, Three shaykhs, they were struck with a knife in the shrine of Imam al-Rida The person who came and he struck them, and his name is Al-Muradi. The same name of the man who struck Amir al-Mu'mineen in the month of Ramadan. His name is Al-Muradi, he comes and he has a, a, they brought out a link. He's saying these Shias are kafir, they do tawassul with Ali ibn Abi Talib, they say Ali this and Ali that. Where does this come from? This comes from not understanding the Qur'an. Because if you, were, if you had understood the Qur'an, you would not come and judge against millions of people and consider them kuffar, consider them idol worshippers. They come and they say, yeah, these people that are going and visiting the shrine of Imam al-Rida or Imam Ali, they're just like the mushrikeen who go and they, they go and they worship idols. They come and they recite the verses of idols comparing what the Shias are doing with what the idol worshippers were doing at that time. But there's a big difference. There's a big difference. They come and they say, you can't do shafa'ah. Because Allah says in the Qur'an that the idols, they do not have shafa'ah. 
But yes, Allah also says in the Quran, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ Some individuals will have shafa'a by the permission of God. Yes, an idol cannot do shafa'a, intercede. But Rasulullah can do shafa'a. The Imams of the Al-Bayt, they can do shafa'a. And my dear brothers and sisters, there are many examples. There are many examples. One day, Abu Hanifa, he was sitting with Imam Sadiq, and I'll conclude with this. Abu Hanifa was sitting with Imam Sadiq, and Imam Sadiq was eating. Once Imam Sadiq finished, he says, Alhamdulillah, oh Allah, thank you. This is from you, and this is from your Prophet, Rasulullah. Meaning the food is from God and Rasulullah. Abu Hanifa, his eyes popped out, and he tells the Imam, لَقَدْ أَشْرَكْتَ يَا You have done shirk. Because you said the food is from God and the Prophet, and the food is only from God. How can you say it's from Rasulullah? So then the Imam alayhi salam, he tells him, Oh Abu Hanifa, have you not recited the Qur'an? Where Allah says in the Qur'an, وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا أَنْ أَغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ God gave them and the Prophet gave them from his fadl. In another verse, وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهِ سَيُؤْتِينَ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَرَسُولُهُ God gives us and Rasulullah gives us. What's wrong with that? So here, my dear brothers and sisters, this issue goes back to the tafsir of the Qur'an. And the tafsir of the Qur'an is very important. And we have to be very careful who we get our knowledge from, who we learn from. Because it all goes back, your religion will go back to the interpretation of the Qur'an. And we have to be very careful who we listen to. Today there are some very powerful speakers that are speaking, but maybe they may be spewing poet poison. You have to be careful who you're listening to. فَلْيَنْظُرُ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ Allah says, let every person look at their knowledge, look at their food. Imam al-Baqir, he says, فَلْيَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ عِلْمِهِ Let them look at their knowledge, who they take it from and what it is. So we have to be very careful where we get the tafsir of the Qur'an from. والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله